today's lesson is we can conquer. Lesson 10, August the 7th, 2016. The printed text is taken from Romans 8, 28 to 39. Devotional reading, 1 John 4, 7, 16. Background scripture, Romans 8, 28, 39. Print passage, Romans 8, 28, 39. Our key verse is, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say in response to this? This is the NIV. If God is for us, who can be against us? The lesson aims for today is... As a result of experience in this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Review the principal points of Paul's teaching on Jesus, from whose love we can never be separated by any turmoil or hardship. Believe that Jesus Christ was God's plan for humankind from the beginning of creation. Number three. Communicate the joy and love of Christ with others. Give the lesson. Verse 28, King James. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknew. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. Verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. This is from the NIV, verse 28, three verses. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Those God loved foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. We cannot fully appreciate verse 28 without linking it to verse 27. Believers cannot get to know, we know, without the power of the Holy Spirit. He is able to intercede on our behalf before our Father in heaven even when our prayers are not audible, and the and provided the foundation for the we know in verse 7, the justified life of believers is empowered by the Holy Spirit. His indwelling presence makes our relationship with God personal. We do not have to rely on the content of the Bible or the testimony of others. We have our own personal experience. To fully understand the meaning of verse 28, we should read another translation. In the NASB, verse 28 reads, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. By themselves, things are not good or bad. God's sovereignty over the universe causes all things to be good, but not good for everybody. They're only good for those who love God and are called by God. God's calling was by chance. Levis has been called by God before the creation of the world. God foreknew whom 
he was going to call. We were predestinated. God determined beforehand for salvation to be conformed to the image of Jesus through his resurrection, becoming adopted children of God. In essence, provided Paul's five steps toward believers sharing in God's glory. God's foreknowledge, verse 29. Believers predestination, verse 29. God's calling, verse 30. God's justification and believers accepting of God's call, verse 30. And believers share in God's glory. What do you think? What does it mean for God to work all things for good? Contrast Christian and secular concepts of good in this regard. King James, verse 31. Shut, what shall we say then to these things? God be for us, who can be against us? 32 that he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that is justified. Who is that condemned? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, the Father, who also make intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. For we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. The NIV says the same thing, only differently. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. Verse 36, as it is written, for your sake we face, face death all day long, for we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Based upon verses 28 through 30, Paul spoke boldly in verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly in him, we can be overconfident. But when it comes to our relationship with God, we base our boldness on his promises and on our past experience. While we know, personalize verse 28. For us, personalize, personalizes verse 31. God's plan of salvation, outlined in verses 28-33, would mean nothing if God did not in turn provide for believers. God's provision protects us from the satanic forces against us. God already knew that humankind would need a Savior, so God did not even spare His only begotten Son to provide a means for salvation. Verse 32 if God did that, surely he would freely give us all things. That is to say, these things were, slash, or needed to protect us against the wiles of the devil. 
Ephesians 6, 3, 11. After a person is justified, made right before God, no one can bring his or her past again to condemn him or her. Every believer is freed from both the penalty and again the guilt of sin. Just in case someone would want to condemn those whom God has just justified, Jesus is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. His death provided the once and for all perfect sacrifice for our sins. His resurrection from the dead made our justification possible. So since our justification was brought with such a high price, nothing can separate us from God's love. Further emphasize the meaning of nothing by providing details of what he meant. Life's troubles, hardships, mountains is climbed. Sufferings are not able to separate us from the love of Christ. Neither can hunger or homelessness. Even though the personal attack of those who would threaten us cannot do it. Quoting Psalm 44, 22, Paul provided a twofold message in verse 36. First, persecution is nothing new for God's people. Satan will always be opposed to anyone who follows God. Secondly, when the sons of Korah wrote this psalm, they did not seem to receive a response from God. Yet, for believers hearing and reading Paul's word, they knew God would respond. What do you think? After the death of a loved one, some people commit suicide to be with their loved ones again. In light of Romans 8, 31, 35, how would you respond to someone who was considering doing the same thing? How would you respond? You would say to them that Satan has captured your heart. Do not listen to the satanic voice of the evil one. Turn to God, turn to Jesus and read his word. Christian folks who are truly saved and believe, believed and saved, do not kill themselves. God is the one who can give life and he can take it away. Please, my sister, my brother, who is thinking about how great the pain is that you must kill yourself to get rid of the pain. Wrong. Please do not kill yourself. That is not biblical. That is not what God would have you to do. For we are more than conquerors. Verse 8, 37, 39. 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor presented principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the King James Version. Now here is the NIV. No, in all these things we're more than conquerors. Through him, Christ, who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, nor the presence, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Recognizing the plight of his readers and listeners who were on the, under Roman oppression, oppression because of their beliefs, Paul closed Romans 8 with his strongest words of encouragement amid such persecution. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
no matter what the trial, tribulation, or natural disaster, God would sustain the first century believers in the church of Rome. We too can share in that same assurance today that God has our back. This is what Paul really meant with the words, for we are more than conquerors. If he had said conquerors only, he would have been referring to the might of human mankind. Instead, he added more than that. God was slash and is more than that. Paul would later clarify what he meant to be a conqueror in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Because of his love for us, God will do the fighting and not believe us. Because of his love for us, God would do the fighting, not believers. Knowing that God would fight believers' battles against whatever adversity or adversary, Paul was convinced that nothing could separate believers from God's love that is made possible through belief in his son. Paul provided several categories of nothing. A second list containing, from verse 35, first, Paul listed the uncertainty associated with life and death. Next, he listed the invisible threats, angels, nor demons, nor any powers, which he would later call principalities and powers in Ephesians 1.21 and 6.12. Third, Paul looked to the present and the future, Current circumstances of future developments could not separate believers from God. Fourth, it was impossible to get beyond God's love, too high or too low. See Psalm 139, 8. Finally, there is nothing ever created that can be separating us from Christ. That is only leaves God. And he is the one we never want to be separated from. What do you think? What does it mean to live a more than conqueror's life? Think about it. A closing thought. People are constantly tossed about the trials and tribulations of this life. Where can they find a safe haven? Paul told the Romans, the church they had Rome, through the love of God in Christ Jesus. They would find a savior from whom love they could never be separated and by whom they would be loved, protected, glorified, and delivered from all trials and tribulations. Your life, my life. Let's face it. Sometimes we face troubles that seem insurmountable. And at the same time, we have people around us who would like to see us struggle and fail. Do we know anybody like that? Yes, of course. Yet we trust the power of Paul's words, Romans 8, 28, to help us see past current struggles to a better future. There are some verses that says, once we come out of the struggles, for God is testing our faith, we are coming out of the struggle like shining pure gold. Your world. We know that God can conquer any evil and resolve any trouble. While we recognize that God is always with us, no matter what earthly trouble we face, we sometimes give in to doubt and fear, despite biblical encouragements not to succumb, not to give up, not to quit, not to turn your back and walk away. That is why we should not quote Romans 8.28 frivolously. Our closing prayer, Almighty God, 
We trust you in every aspect of our lives. We walk assuredly knowing that you are in control. Thank you for being an ever-present help in a time of trouble. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.